Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. And now for something completely different. You're looking at one of the few true breakthroughs in the methodology and technology of portraying time of the last 15 years. Many have claimed to reinvent the display of time, but HYT with this H1 truly have invented a new way of portraying the passage of time using a combination of modern and retro technology. On the wrist, 49 millimeters, the hydromechanical HYT H1 is an immense timepiece. It has the presence of a sort of steampunk time machine, which quite frankly, is sort of what it is, mixing technology from the 19th century with a look that says 22nd century. But it wears easy on a smaller wrist. My wrist is 6 and 3rd inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see that the look is huge, and the watch is a full 18 millimeters thick. But because, frankly, it's mostly, con it's mostly full of air, and it's made of titanium, so it wears quite light on the wrist. I will say that it weighs no more because it does have a vulcanized rubber strap, a compact pin buckle, a full titanium case that's mostly evacuated, no heavier than a 40 millimeter Rolex sports watch with an oyster bracelet and clasp. This is a very comfortable timepiece to wear. If you're familiar with something like a 47 millimeter Panerai Luminor in the 1950 case or Radiomir, in the traditional wire loop case in titanium, you're gonna get a good sense of how much this weighs. It really weighs only about as much as a G-Shock or a forged carbon AP offshore. Very, very comfortable. The case back is regularly shaped. You can see that it's got a little bit of a conical form to it so it nestles into the skin comfortably and then a flat regular case back that sits flush to the wrist. The quality of the strap is outstanding. So from an ergonomic standpoint, the question is not going to be how small is your wrist and will it fit. Rest assured, unless your wrist is much smaller than 15 centimeters, it will fit. The bigger question is do you like the look of it? And to be honest, this is a watch that is completely polarizing. It's a love-hate type design. There is no middle ground with the HYT. That's been my experience with the watch. And I will say, from a personal standpoint, I just love it. It's completely original, inventive, it's a breath of fresh air, it's derivative of absolutely nothing, and that's what high horology needs in this modern age. Now what I'm going to call out is the arrangement of the complications and the display of time, then dig a little bit deeper into the technology. The watch portrays time in a regulator format, so while it is a hyper-modern portrayal, it is nevertheless a regulator in the traditional sense. Right here at 12 o'clock you have a minute subdial, 0 to 60 portrayed conventionally with a minute's hand, and then you have a circumferential fluorescent fluid display. And the key here is that you're actually looking at two separate fluids. Well, it appears that you've got a tube, a circumferential tube that's half filled with the fluorescent material. The reality is there's a balance between two viscous materials, one that contains the fluorescent elements and another that's completely clear. And each bellows, each of the bellows, I should say, contains a separate fluid. Each one is a distinct reservoir, and it's the push and the pull between the two that creates this circumferential hour track. And the meniscus, the dividing point between the two, is in fact what acts as the hour index, the moving hour hand around the dial. Now it's also a retrograde, so when the fluorescent material arcs all the way around in a single circuit, so basically from six to six, it immediately jumps back with the bellows drawing the fluorescent back to the beginning and starting another circuit for the next 12 hours of the day. Very clever. It also works in real time. Now you'll note as I move the minute hand, you'll see the fluid actually retracts very quickly. So this is something that is designed to operate in the same function as a real time retrograde hour hand would. It jumps right back to the beginning at six and you can actually advance it in real time, and this is critical when you're setting the watch because it'll keep up with the movement of the minute hand, allowing you to correct your watch in real time. So it functions like a traditional timepiece, albeit with the split hour and minute and a retrograde action, but those are traditional features of horology. What is not is the way that the technology is managed and the way that the mechanical features of the movement interact with the hydraulic elements of the movement. Now you have a turbine style constant seconds right here at roughly three o'clock and then at two, excuse me, nine o'clock and then right over here at about 2.30 you have a 65 hour power reserve indicator. But the bellows at center are truly 
the raison d'etre of this movement. On the back, you can see, well, frankly, a fairly traditional portrayal of mechanical watchmaking. Beautifully done. This is all hand-finished by Chronode, Jean-Francois Mohan's high horology sort of um, specialist house. They've designed watches for Harry Winston. They did the Opus 10. They've been highly involved in the development of the Project Z movements for Harry Winston. They've done work for MBNF. Very high-end, but with traditional beautiful finish. The anglage is mirror quality. All of the screw heads are polished. There's a tight perlage about the base plate. And of course, a subtle Cote de Genève on the upper bridges. But it's the way that the traditional clockwork interacts with the bellows that makes this watch so distinctive. Now, the bellows themselves are very thin, almost foil-like in their construction, so exceptionally delicate. They're actuated by a cam rocker arm. You can sort of see one through the skeletonization of the movement right here. And as the cam turns, and moves the rocker arm that drives each of these bellows, it produces the motion of the hour index, the, the hour fluid marker on the dial. So traditional clockwork, traditional gear train technology is driving the minute hand, the seconds, and the power reserve, and the bellows system through a cam is operating this moving track of fluorescent liquid. This took a long time to realize. It's simple in concept, but it was startlingly, startlingly difficult in execution. It took roughly 10 years from inception in 2002 to the shipment of the first production models, of which this is one, in 2012. So 10 years to realize a vision of blending fluid time telling with traditional mechanical watchmaking. In a lot of ways, it, it's almost a fusion of the Swiss watch movement with an old-fashioned, and I mean like prehistoric, clepsydra type water clock very cool but also romantic in a strangely antiquarian sense clepsydras were used in ancient china ancient greece babylon and egypt and essentially they were just water clocks with one pitcher flowing into another at a tested known rate to mark the passage of time and some of that is recaptured in the hyt caliber 101 that we see here now, fundamentally, what you're getting with the Caliber 101 is traditional watchmaking. It operates at 4 hertz, so 28,800 vibrations per hour. It has a 65-hour power, power reserve. It pivots on 35 joules, and this is, quite honestly, a sports watch movement in a sports watch. It may seem a little bit ironic that a watch with 100-meter water resistance already has two separate types of fluid inside its case. But HYT designed this watch to be worn daily. Granted, because of its sheer bulk, and I mean its physical bulk, not its mass, it's not going to fit under any kind of cuff whatsoever, unless perhaps you're wearing a spacesuit over this thing. But it is a rugged timepiece. It's not designed to be babied. As delicate as the internal components are, they're housed in a robust case, fully shock protected, meant to be used daily, meant to be enjoyed. This watch represents one of the earliest HYT-1 models now, they only produce at peak, I mean, at capacity, flat out. HYT only makes 550 watches a year. When this one came out, and I will mention, it is one of the first 10 produced. They were at a rate of approximately 50 per year, just getting production underway. This is an historic timepiece, not only completely original, not only a system of time portrayal that I believe will be in time remembered as a milestone, a landmark, and an important opening chapter in modern horology, but a successful design and a no compromise concept. It is an art piece, it is a concept watch, but it also works and it's designed to be used daily. These watches, even at peak production, even at 550 per year, are far more exclusive than those even of FP Jorn, who makes approximately 800 to 900 per year. Just to give you a sense of scale, someone like uh, a company like Grubel Force making everything by hand will make 80 to 100 a year. FP Jorn will make 800 to 900 per year. Rolex will make about a million per year. And a company like Panerai, another manufacturer of high-end oversized sports watches, is going to make about 75,000 a year. So not only unique, not only historic, but incredibly exclusive. The HYT-1 represents a living piece of horological history and a modern milestone. These will be stars of auctions in the not too distant future, but you can own this watch now and you can see it in high resolution images on our website, Watch You Want.